Admiral's Log, November 3rd, 1908. The year 1908 has witnessed a substantial shift in the naval ambitions of the Soviet Union, driven by my unwavering commitment to modernize our fleet. The inception of a strategically incited conflict with Spain has set the stage for an unprecedented expansion of the Navy's capabilities. This war, while bold and contentious, has served a critical purpose. It successfully secured a significant increase in the naval budget, a vital component in realizing my vision for a modern fleet. The additional funds have been judiciously allocated towards research and development, leading to the groundbreaking design and construction of the Soviet Navy's first two dreadnoughts. These formidable warships symbolize the dawn of a new era in naval warfare and promise to redefine our naval strength. However, the landscape of European politics is in turmoil, and the ripples of our conflict have extended beyond its intended scope. The Austro-Hungarian Empire, amidst the growing instability, has been drawn into the fray. This new development presents a formidable challenge, particularly for our Black Sea Fleet, which finds itself alarmingly unprepared for an all-out conflict with the Austro-Hungarian Navy. The situation in the Black Sea is precarious. Our fleet, although lacking in readiness, is compelled to engage in a battle where the odds are not in our favor. The task ahead is daunting, and the potential consequences of this engagement loom large. The Black Sea Fleet, though outmatched, is ready to deliver its utmost, embodying the resilience and bravery that define our naval forces. As I pen this log, the air is thick with anticipation and uncertainty. The impending conflict with the Austro-Hungarian Navy will undoubtedly be a critical test of our strategic acumen and martial prowess. It is a battle that will not only shape the immediate future of our naval operations, but also leave an indelible mark on the course of this war. Hey guys, still here and welcome to episode 8. For this one, we're jumping right into a battle. This task force, led by the Gleb, has ambushed a battleship for the Austro-Hungarian Navy. I thought, nice, we're gonna take down another one of their battleships. This, with all the cruisers that I have, should be a cakewalk. And then I saw the battleship. The Austro-Hungarian Navy has been designing dreadnoughts. And these dreadnoughts... Oh boy. Do they carry a lot of guns. That's 12 main guns. You think. And then there's another four. This thing has a lot of firepower. And it kind of makes me reconsider my plan of having a battleship soak up the damage and then having cruisers do all the damage to the battleship. Because if this thing starts taking shots at my cruisers, I am going to have a bit of a challenge on my hands. On top of that, I have an additional challenge this particular battle. Some of these ships are low fuel. Um, the ones that are darker colored are the ones that are on low fuel. Unfortunately, this is 4 7th, <laughs> so more than half of my division. And this means my division is only doing 12 knots. So what I'm going to have to do is detach the ones that are on low fuel. So that the ones that do have fuel can actually get up some decent speed. Now this could be important for some of these ships. Because some of these might give them, or this additional speed might give them just the additional survivability that I need. The other ships are light cruisers of the scout class. These only parry or carry 4-inch guns. Um, they're probably going to be very quick to sink. So my plan is to use them as a screening force against the enemy ships. Because there are a lot of torpedo boats escorting this battleship. It is not just the battleship that we'll be facing. But, because those small ships are so small, we can't actually see them yet. Now, the other division of the battle, or sorry, the heavy cruisers might be low on fuel but they're not low on punching power. This is the ship class that has the 8-inchers as well as the, let's say, dual barrel torpedo launchers. It's going to be a very interesting fight, this one. Let's see if the Austro-Hungarians have managed to upgrade their torpedoes. We have 5 kilometers. They haven't done that yet. It's basically only a matter of time until I start taking torpedoes. So I'm going to turn on torpedo avoidance mode on my ships, so that if a torpedo is spotted, 
I don't have to worry about it as much. Now, because I started crew training very late in the, well, <laughs> fairly uh, short while ago, this means that my crews, unfortunately, have very little experience with being able to shoot. So accuracy is going to be all over the place, and we're going to have to rely upon volume of fire. We're going to have to try and hit these guys a lot, or just, well, throw a whole lot of stuff at them and hope that something actually connects. We have incoming torpedoes here on the Kreshet. Oh, I don't know if I can dodge that. I should be able to. There's another one. Thankfully, that thing spread out nicely. Now, I really don't care for the torpedo boats when it comes to a victory point uh, perspective. The victory points for torpedo boats are awfully low. It is interesting when it comes to the battleship, especially this thing. Because this is new, this is probably very expensive, and it would be perfect if the Austro-Hungarians would lose this ship. First, though, we'll have to claw our way through all of these torpedo boats. And right now I can only see one, but I believe they're getting escorted by 8 to 10. It's a substantial amount of escorts that these guys have. Unfortunately for the Austro-Hungarians, they forgot to put reloads on them. Or perhaps it was a conscious design decision. And I thought, well, they're either going to run away, or there'll be nothing left to run away with. And considering that this guy is just rushing into my forces, even with some survivability, I don't think we'll be seeing it again. Cormoran T-30 is gone. Now at this point we can see the battleship. <clears throat> the Schöne. 18 and a half knots. It is packing cramped quarters, but maximum bulkheads. It's an interesting design choice, because with this cruise, well, crew losses are going to be a substantial problem. It's not fast. It's just doing 18 and a half knots. It has a single hull bottom. It has anti-flood two. It has anti-torp three. Oh boy, that's going to be a potential problem, as making it more difficult to torpedo this thing and keep going with the flooding. In the meanwhile, the Cormoran T-30 is cooking off. What I can try and do is force this thing to surrender. So just pop high explosive at it and start eliminating the crew. It's not the cleanest way to get a kill. Well, in the sense that um, there are more noble ways of eliminating targets. But considering the threat that this thing poses and my most likely complete inability to pen it... I am not going to take any chances. Armor-wise, this thing is not bad. Pretty hefty main armor belt, but the armor quality is awful. The armor quality on the Gleb, at least, is plus 78%. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The armor quality on the Gleb is a lot better than that on the Schöne. Considering how the rest of the ships are deployed, I'm thinking they're screening. And it is a bunch of torpedo boats, but it's also a couple of light cruisers. So it's not just one type of ship. As we're pumping this thing full of high explosive fire, the Schöne is already losing crew, and with that, damage control abilities. The damage control abilities are going to be pretty critical. The less damage control you have, the more the fires will hurt. They will continue to deal damage, they will continue to burn, and slowly but steadily, you might find your whole ship engulfed in flames. That is not the direct goal that I have. Um, it's more of a potential side effect of just continuously hitting this thing. Now, I have to keep very much in mind that it's not alone. Oh, there's also destroyers about. These destroyers, some of them have 5 kilometer range. Some of them do not. So I have to be quite wary about how these torpedo boats and destroyers are maneuvering. And what exactly they seem to be doing. Because the moment that they start getting closer, I'm going to be in trouble. After some fighting and a few torpedo attacks, as launched by these very bold destroyers of mine, the battleship has found that her survivability might be coming to an end. She's lost about 30% of her crew. Her main tower has been destroyed. She has fires raging. She has a couple of different flooded compartments. And her accuracy is nowhere to be found. So, as much as this thing looked impressive, 
When it actually got to fighting, it was the cramped crew quarters that seemed to have done her in. She's not dead yet, though. I cannot just disregard her as a combatant because it's still a threat. Have I lost some ships in the meanwhile? Well, I've gotten pretty close as the Bion took a torpedo. Um, and because I have all of my ships on torpedo avoidance mode, everybody panics. And everybody is very quick to try and just get out of the path of a torpedo, even if that torpedo is nowhere near, like with this side of the fleet. So, my ships have uh, scattered a lot. Let's detach the Bion and pull her out of this fight. I don't need her around anymore. And in the meanwhile, we're, yep, we're lobbing another torpedo into the Schöne. She's lost 30% of her crew. And her battle damage control is about 60%. Even the reload on her main guns is going to increase more and more and more. And more people aboard this ship are going to have to do more work. As the damage keeps going up. But the crew does not. Um, Kreshet has launched its starboard launcher. The Boiki over here is coming in for a torpedo attack. And I think that could be it for the Schöne. In the meanwhile, we are looking at some really close range fights here between the Russ, the Gleb, and the Temis. Temis has no longer any torpedoes, which is very fortunate. Um, neither does Russ. Russ has also had her torpedoes destroyed. So, great. Torpedo boat coming up from behind. Turn the Gleb around. And if all of you people could actually go and make yourself, I don't know, useful. That would be lovely. Destroy another main gun on the Russ. This is a problem with those 4-inch. They're so exposed. And the moment that a gun gets destroyed, you just... Yeah, there she goes. The Russ basically has no ammo left. She still has some guns, but not a whole lot. It looks like it might be high time to start getting... Oh, another torpedo hit. Like, it might be high time to get another design for a light cruiser. Because this one... I think it's a bit past its prime. The ship no longer performs as good as I need it to. And it's really starting to show. Starboard launcher on the Kreshet is ready. The Schöne is now almost completely ablaze with about 36% crew lost. And it seems like my ships... Well, sure enough, they've taken some damage, especially the Bayon. The rest of them are fine. If a little out of range. Unfortunately, Russ decided to surrender. Um, <clears throat> can't really blame it there, as it was very close range against Temis and took a ton of damage there. Looks like Schön is going under. Buoyancy, 4%. Listing to starboard pretty bad, 2%. Gone. That's the battleship. Nice work, gentlemen. Very nice work. Now, some of these torpedo boats are still a threat. They actually carry guns which are bigger than my destroyer's guns. So I'm going to try and pull the destroyers out of here. I don't need the DDs anymore. I need some bigger guns. And considering that most of these don't carry a reload, I can pretty much, well, fairly safely engage these without too much of a risk. It's not entirely safe. Absolutely not. <clears throat> but as long as these guys don't have a full complement of torpedoes, I can make something happen here. Well, if we don't dunk our shot into the water just in front of the T-14, that would be fantastic. The result of this battle came out to almost 17,000 victory points for the Soviet Union. When it comes to the Russians, or sorry, to the Austro-Hungarians, they did not have every ship go down. A couple of torpedo boats survived. But the key is the battleship. The Vitibus Unitas class battleship was worth 91 million. I doubt it'll be worth nearly as much right now. Disregard, by the way, the crew training, because this is something that gets reset to cadets if a ship dies. I'm not sure why. It can have a veteran crew, which is the most experienced level, and then the crew gets killed off, and boom, they're all cadets. I would also like to draw your attention to the fact that their light cruisers, costing 14 to 18 million, are more expensive than some of my heavy cruisers, coming in at 30 million, 
as well as oh, sorry, that's the Orkangul, uh, as well as 58 million. The Pilatas, <laughs> well, the, the Comrade class, these guys are expensive. These are my budget cruisers. Um, these. 13 million, only displacing 3,750 tons, which is, well, about a third of the big Comrade class. Uh, so far, they did perform, though, and that's the most important thing. As the task force was on its way back to Sevastopol, I have been met by the Austro-Hungarian battle group operating now in the Black Sea. This is two battleships, Tegethof and Starke. These are both old. They only have the 13.3 inch guns and a whole bunch of secondaries. They're escorted by, well, everybody, especially torpedo boats. So this, oh boy, this is going to be a lot of victory points. The problem, however, could be that I'm going in with a fleet that is not up to full strength. It does not have the full firepower that it normally has. It does not have the full health. It might not even have all the fuel that I need. I mean, I'm trying to get back to Sevastopol to get fixed, to get refueled, to get my crew replenished. Uh, this is not supposed to happen right now. Moreover, I wasn't expecting this fight for a couple more months, as I was hoping to have the new battleship out there. Sadly, the Austro-Hungarians kind of uh, jumped ahead. They jumped the queue, and because of that, this is the fight that we're having. Now, in case you want to see a tally, uh, two battleships, three heavy, six lights, five DDs, and 34 torpedo boats. The health of my ships, like I said, not great. Um, some of these, like the Bayan, well, this one got hit pretty bad last time around, as you can see. But, by some miracle, it's actually still functional, and it seems to have been repaired, too. Unfortunately, Bayan is operated by cadets. So, damage control, accuracy, aim time, everything is pretty awful. On top of that, low fuel means that disengaging is going to be pretty difficult, too. I wouldn't be surprised if by this point, almost every single ship is suffering from low fuel. I'm going to start detaching ships that have low fuel, so I at least know that they're going to be a potential issue. Because I need to know which ships can go fast, which ships can go far, and which ships can absolutely not do that. Let's see, join the Talon here, and we got the two DDs. Yeah, even the DDs have low fuel, still. Yikes. Yikes. Now, I can try to make it back to Sevastopol. I can try to turn everybody around. I don't think that will work. For the simple reason that either this fight's going to happen now or next month. And, well, at that point, it doesn't really matter whether or not the battleship is ready. Because I can't get it fi finished in a month. I cannot crank it out that quick. What I can do is use my CLs, like I did before, to try and eliminate as many torpedo boats as possible before having them try to make a run for potentially the battleships. Because again, I believe those should be the prize. That should be the ultimate target. And here they are now. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's not going to be so easy to get at them. Because we have a bit of resistance between them and myself. Now Rinda, regular trained crew, she has enough ammunition. We got Gryden over here, full health. Uh, Izumrud, slight damage, but otherwise fine. And the Talon. All these guys have regular crews. Which should really help with their aiming. Even as we're trying to hit something quite small and fast at distance. Well, just within view of a smoke screen, but not quite there yet. They do have a 3km range torpedo. Some of them have a bit more, as I think some of them have been upgraded. So we're going to have to dance around the range. Screen the heavy cruisers, hello. And try and not die to the first couple of torpedoes coming my way. Hold on, don't avoid the torpedo. Grind, you should be fine. You should be fine, as opposed to this torpedo boat. That one might very well be their first casualty. I think it might be the Izumrut that's in trouble. You need to turn starboard and dodge the torps. Damn it, there's a whole lot more where that came from. Focus on the one in the back. You're fine. You're fine. 
You're still part of the div. Izumrud, rejoin the div. Look deep. Who else is behind those torpedoes? The DDs to some extent. We got a couple going this way. We got a couple going that way. So if the DDs maintain their course, they should be fine. The heavy cruisers, <clears throat> the one that do have low mobility, shouldn't be an issue. It's the ones that have some impaired mobility. No, sorry, the, the normal ones are fine. The low mobility ones are even better. They're very well positioned not to take a hit. Riding over here is going to get a close call, but won't actually be affected. Jesus, this thing barely got detected and it's already dead. Boom. Flash fire. Yeah, it's probably going to cook off completely. Flash fire twice. Flash fire three times. A DD took the torpedo? Really? Fine. Um... You're going to be limiting the speed quite a lot. That's not something I really want. I was hoping to use the DDs at some point to make a run after the battleships. Because the DDs are even faster under normal circumstances. Circumstances like these, where everybody has no fuel, that's a completely different story. Now this is kind of coming back to bite me from, well, many episodes ago. When I said that these newer cruisers, the heavy cruisers that is, shit there's another. The heavy cruisers didn't need a whole lot of mobility. I wasn't going to go sailing around the world. I'm still not sailing around the world. But the enemy did present an opportunity to go raiding. Um, and ironically, as I'm trying to get back to my own home waters, that's when this fight happens. This guy has gotten way too close. And this heavy cruiser is almost out of HE. That is not good against this many small targets. Oh boy. Rinda is desperately trying to change direction. <clears throat> Thankfully these torpedo boats don't have their launchers on the bow. We got them on the stern. So as long as they're not coming well, as long as they're coming directly at me, I might have an opportunity to try and get some damage in. Wait, you got no ammo? So the torpedoes are already in the water. Okay. I'm not sure if that's going to be a particularly good message. Come on. Get some damage in. I think some of these torpedo boats launched their torpedoes a while ago. Because they did have that 5.1 kilometer range, which made them completely fluff their shots as I started maneuvering. So a couple of these, I can mostly ignore because they're, well, they're big torpedo boats. Well, they're big gunboats. They're not torpedo boats anymore. They're just big gunboats now. I don't like where this is going. Because this is going to ram. That'll probably hurt you more than it will hurt me. But it's still not something I want to have happen because it's damage that doesn't need to happen. Bonk. Flooding on the torpedo boat. No flooding on the heavy cruiser. Or the light cruiser. Am I getting hit by friendlies? Yes, by an 8-incher. Crap. Kill him! Do it now! Don't do it with torpedoes, though. Or you will end up torpedoing yourself. Why are these guns not functioning? Okay, we took out the 12... There we go. That's what I need. That's exactly what I need. Kill it before it rams you again. Oh boy. Incoming torpedoes in substantial numbers. Get rid of the 18. Even though it's not a <clears throat> primary threat right now, keep zigzagging. On the one hand, I'm very much inclined to click the avoid button. On the other hand, if I do so, everybody's going to lose their minds and go maneuvering to avoid, well, sometimes torpedoes that are completely irrelevant to them. 
That's my problem with it. Let's smoke you guys up. It won't exactly protect you from a torpedo, but it will protect the cruisers behind you from some direct gunfire from the battleship. 69 million for a battleship, doing 17 knots with a pretty hefty amount of armor. Trained crew, crowned crew quarters. Ooh, vulnerability. Incoming torpedo. Could hit the Menshikov. Are you low fuel? Well, not yet. Detach the Menshikov, go the other way. That's good damage right there. Look at the amount of things that they got sailing around here. Oh shit. Menshikov. Come on. Need you to dodge, not this. Who's leading this party? Rinda is. What are we even trying to hit? Like, go hit something over there. Anything that happens to be in the way has to have a problem. 18 should be flooding right about now. You dodge the torp like a pro. So you can rejoin the Isaac Victoria. There goes the T1. The T18 is flooding again. Don't like this flanking maneuver that they got going on. Focus on this first. DDs. Still tons of targets between myself and the battleships. We are not making this run yet. We are going to start targeting this ship over here, which I think might be a light cruiser in order to hit everything between. So the T8, potentially the 22. We'll see how well that will go. Jeez, this thing is sturdy. 10,000 points of damage and it's not dead. Tough little ship. All right. This is going to take a while. After some long fighting, and uh, a most of the Austro-Hungarian Navy is at the bottom. Most of this task force is no longer here. Sure enough, some ships are still very much healthy. Some of them I don't dare touch. Most of my ships are trying to beat a retreat. The only one is the exception is the Pallada. She's trying to still deal with battleship Tegethoff, um, unsuccessfully so. Tegethoff has taken a ton of damage, but I'll not be able to finish her off. I don't dare risk the rest of my cruisers, and I might be able to finish off the battleship, but at what cost? That is my concern. I can fix up my cruisers. They can fix up their battleship. Fixing up my cruisers will take less time than them fixing up their battleship, and it'll also be really expensive. So, what I'm going to do now is disengage. I have done what I came here to do. I have inflicted massive amounts of damage upon the Navy. The Austro-Hungarian Navy, to be exact. And now it is time to leave. Hopefully, this weather, as well as the, well, distinct lack of accuracy from these ships, now that they've been so badly damaged, will allow me to do just that. We're going to try and leave. I don't have to sink everything, but I sure sunk a lot of torpedo boats. Now, sure enough, you can make the argument, well, sinking torpedo boats and everything is fine, but it's not really that profitable. No, you're right. It's not that profitable. But this war isn't won in this one battle. I can still win the war by going after the battleships next time. Next time, now that they don't have any escorts. Next time, now that the heavy cruisers will be refueled. Next time, now that I am going to be able to cut through all the clutter and very quickly get to the battleship, even with the, let's say, cheap <laughs> shotgun cruisers, and then try and make my way to the battleship with torpedoes. Which is a feat, considering it can only do a kilometer and a half. But, hey, that's the goal. That's the job. So, as much as I would love to sink everything, as much as it's mostly a matter of honor or a challenge, I don't think that right now it's the right call to make. So we're just going to disengage, save as many ships as I can, and get to dock to repair. Now, I know I said I was trying to disengage. Oh shit, there goes the fog. Um, 
The Bayon's too slow to disengage. So we're going to do something else with the Bayon. Look at that weather change affecting the ship. <laughs> this is bizarre. Okay. Um, load both bow torpedo launchers and fire at the target. We're going to make a last stand here. Because this thing is running away at 8 knots and this battleship is running at me at 17 knots. I'll never escape it. So we're not going to bother. Bow one away. Starboard one away. Come over to starboard. Maximum turn. The Starka is going to have to do some maneuvering. She's trying to turn to port, which will only spread out the damage. One's going to hit in the stern, one potentially amidships. And then Bayon has more where that came from. I just hope that the ship will live long enough in order to get her deadly payload away. There's one. Oh, that's a midships. Boom. That's a dud. And oh, Jesus. The Bayon was loaded with two duds. Now that is unfortunate. Thankfully, I have a few more surprises. I have two more por uh, port launchers. So, <clears throat> if at all possible, please do something to stop this ship. Because you're fucked anyway. You might as well try and take them down with you. The Azia still has a chance. The Durban still has a chance. But you do need to do something. And it does not look like you're doing it. Ah, Bayan's last stand. No joy. No joy. This means that the Azia, as well as Durban, are very much at risk. And I don't like it. The Azia can try and do the same thing. But I fear that she too is going to have some issues engaging this ship. If I also bring in the Durbant, perhaps I have a chance. But I was trying to evacuate these ships. I'm trying to save these ships. Not try and engage the battleship with torpedoes. Because I've run out of high explosive a while ago. So the only thing I can shoot at this ship is armor-piercing ammunition, which just does about nothing. The fore belt and stern belt, yes, they're options, but not great ones at that. Let's angle a bit. Let's see if I can get these ships somewhat together. We need to head directly to this ship. You're going to start turning to starboard. This is going to get a bit tight. If I'm able to sink this ship, or at least cripple it, that'd be great. Because I have my light cruisers and the Pallada over there escaping. I've got the DDs moving away, the Glebs moving away. I've got the Isaac Victoria moving away. Oh, here come the torpedo boats again. <clears throat> are you still packing? Yeah, you are. You may fire when you're ready. Zia's coming in. This can probably hurt me quite a lot. Oh yeah, that's not good. Is the Starka moving to starboard? Fortunately, they only have one of those big guns. One of those 13s. The rest of them is 7.5. And, and they don't have too many of those. They got a whole bunch of 6, though. But the 6, I don't think, are that big of an issue. So now or never moment. Either you slam these torpedoes into that ship and you live to fight another day, or at least another couple of hours to deal with the torpedo boats, or you sink right here, right now. That's pretty much the options that are available to this ship. What, we caused flooding? Point bow directly at ship. Aggressive launch. Don't tell me the tubes have been destroyed, or I'm going to be very disappointed with you. Nope, the tubes are working, and the weapons are away. Now turn to port. We're going to hit them once on the stern, which might jam the rudder up. Oh, fuck's sake, another? Come on. I am not getting particularly lucky with the amount of duds here. Now, we do have another starboard launcher. One just fluffed. The other one might look decent. Come on. Just 
No, it's flushing the battleship away from the target. Or from the, the Durbans. But we're not getting anywhere. Come on. Three duds in a row. I need better torpedoes. My torpedo quality is awful. And with that, the torpedo reliability is awful. And, uh, well, seeing as I don't have a whole lot of funding for research, it's not like I can expect better torpedoes anytime soon. Something really unexpected happened. Starka exploded. One of her turrets popped off, causing a chain reaction throughout the ship. And <laughs> she's gone. The turret left the ship, the stern turret's still there, but the extensive fire claimed the rest of the ship. So, yeah, one lucky hit cooked off the turret and cooked off the whole ship. Unfortunately, Azia, well, she's around to see it, but she won't enjoy it for very long. She's sinking. The Durban still not exactly out of the fight. But I can end the battle, so let's. Let's. Ooh, that got expensive. 17,000 victory points for me, 10,000 for them. I had expected something a little better. I probably lost too many cruisers. I lost one, two, three cruisers. They lost five destroyers. Two, four, many. How many ships did they lose? Can we please get a tally? Because that would be a heck of a lot easier than just guessing or manually having to add up the numbers. Sadly, no tally, but um, there's still one, I guess. And thankfully, some of the crew was saved. So it's not all bad. Now, the situation over here is probably going to be somewhat stable. I.e. my ships, whatever's left of them, will make it back to port. The guys over here... Yeah, that's about half the uh, torpedo boats that are gone. All the DDs are gone. That Brattle ship is in shambles. I don't think they're completely gone, though. We'll see them again. Question is when. Also, when can I expect this ship? See, three months. We're going to deploy the Europa to Sevastopol, now that I know that this is definitely going to be a hotbed. So, the Sevastopol it is. And I might also deploy the Sviatoy Iakov. The rest of the area is not that... Well, Japan's relationship's not spectacular. No, we're going to deploy that ship east. Because I cannot expect these guys to maintain neutrality at all times. Or at least, well, they're not exactly neutral. I mean, they don't like me that much. Uh, we're going to order another. I want another one of these ships. We do have some room in the budget, although not a whole lot. And hopefully the Japanese can just hold off on fighting for a while until my ship is ready. Now, hopefully the Austro-Hungarians will be kind enough to wait until my ships are repaired and my new battleship is ready, but I can't guarantee that. Join me next time and see what happens. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon for more.